Hello YouTube, it's Gopernupper, and today I've got my 20th camera haul for you. This is a pretty big number, and this is a pretty big haul, so we're just going to jump right into it. Up at the top here, we've got my Olympus OM10 with a 50mm f2 Zucchio in great working shape. No problems with the camera at all. This was $10. It also came with this extra third-party lens. It is a... What is that? A Kiron 70 to, I believe that's a 150 f4. Nothing too crazy. Here's a Bell & Howell Electric Eye 127 that I also picked up. This one does work, however, it is a bit finicky with the electric eye. It needs a lot of light to work. Works just fine otherwise. This is a Kodak 35RF that I got for $5 from my local camera shop. Uh, this was in exchange for a favor, otherwise he wasn't going to sell it to me at all. So five bucks and a favor gets me a pretty neat camera. Um, because of the way the shutter interlock works, I can't show you the shutter firing, but the camera is in great functional condition. Over here is an Agfa Optima 535 sensor. This one's missing the batteries, but otherwise works fine. This one I got in a trade. I traded a smaller point-and-shoot for it. I believe it was a Canon of some sort. Over here is an M1 motor drive for Minolta cameras. This one was $5 from my local camera shop. Uh, he really didn't have a use for it and just wanted it gone, so he sold it to me. Over here are a couple of Kodak filters and other components that go with the Retina cameras. They're made by Kodak AG. Moving back to the start here, we have a Kodak stereo camera that I got for $10 in a Craigslist ad with an extra $5 to have it shipped to my front door. So I didn't have to meet outside of like a Walmart or something. Works great. Uh, beautiful camera. Came with the case as well. Then down here for $10 from a flea market, I got this Polaroid Model 150 in really good shape. I'm not going to unfold it all the way because that would take a while. But uh, yeah, there you have it. The shutter works. Um, otherwise, there's not too much else that you can do with this camera because it uses an extinct film format. But very cool camera at a very good price. It did come with some of the paperwork and a wink light, as if I needed another wink light. But now I've got a couple more, or two more. Uh, the paperwork is over there. This is a Pentax K1000 SE, the special edition with the brown leatherette that I got for $15 at a local flea market. Uh, I do need to clean some fungus out of the lens yet. That's just on the front element. But other than that, a great camera in great shape for a pretty good deal. It came with the case. I'm just not showing it here. Over here is my newest Zeiss Contaflex. This one is a Contaflex 2 that comes with the telescope lens element. It is removable. It threads off just like that. And this is in really great shape. Uh, obviously, it came with the mounting hardware, which slides off of the camera, just like that. And then you've got a regular Contaflex underneath. And this one worked great without any additional cleaning or modifications. I'm going to wind the camera, but it'll take two hands. And here goes. In beautiful working condition. Now back over here. This is something that you don't really see at my local Goodwill too much. $10 nets me a Kodak Tourist 2 folding camera. Works just fine. Nothing too crazy, three shutter settings, a variety of apertures, but uh, just a really cool thing to see at my local Goodwill, because you really don't see these that much. Back over here, another find from a different day. This is a Minolta Hymatic AF2. This one doesn't have any batteries in it right now, so you'll just have to take my... Ooh, excuse me, you'll have to take my word for the fact that it does work. But this is a steel at $2.99, so I am very pleased. And Goodwill came in pretty darn strong in this particular haul, as you'll see relatively quickly. Next down here was a find from my local camera store. Uh, an older woman came in with some old stuff that she found in her basement and had no particular use for. It was these three items. Five dollars for everything. This is the Veriframe finder for a C44 or a C4. 
or a C4R, I believe, but it has settings for 50, 35, and 100 millimeter lenses. It even has parallax correction on a distance setting. In here, in this box, is an Argus C3 100mm telephoto Sandmar lens made by Enawork. And then over here is just another Argus C3. Now, the camera shop that I bought this from doesn't really deal in anything vintage, and they had no use for it. As she gave them two, um, they had one to sell and one to put on display. From the same camera shop, about a week later, I picked up this Polaroid Spectra for $5. Pops up as you would expect, works great, and looks absolutely gorgeous. This thing is in phenomenal condition, one of the best looking and working Spectras that I've ever seen. Next, over here, we have this Olympus Infinity Stylus Epic Zoom 80, but this one is in black. It does work. Uh, it needs. I need to put a battery in there, but I got this one for six dollars and fifty cents because the dealer was having a sale, and oh, they took the tag off. I forgot about that. But they originally wanted nine dollars for it. These next couple items are from the local thrift store that is nearest my home. They'd recently come into new ownership, and, well, the owner wanting to make friends with me, because I'm in there quite a bit, he sold me all of this stuff for $5. A Olympus Stylus Epic Zoom 170 in its bag. In this box here, we just have your standard assortment of teleconverters. Over here, we have some third-party lenses, including a Gemini Zoom. This one, I believe, is a Vivitar Zoom, if I'm not mistaken. No, it's an Osawa Zoom, excuse me. We have a Canon 50mm, and this was the real reason I bought all this stuff. It's a 51.4 from the FD mount system. I'm going to put that cap back on quick. And then over here we have a Gemini 50mm, or a 28... <clears throat> I cannot speak right now, it's a 28mm f2.8. All of these are for the Canon FD system, I believe, with this one being the exception. I'm pretty sure that one's a Minolta mount. But yeah, $5 for all that stuff, so nothing terribly expensive. Now over here, Goodwill had some more pretty decent finds. This is a Realist Stereo Viewer. It was not $25. I got it for $15 because I explained that it was missing some parts. Um, nothing too crazy here. It is missing some stuff on the back. And it came with this pretty neat slide in it and i believe that's a honda cb754 with a vetter fairing on it but other than that nothing too spectacular really nice addition to my stereo stuff and uh yeah not bad it came with the box i was very happy i found this uh one step here for $3.99. I unconditionally grab Polaroids whenever I find them at Goodwill because I can usually actually give these to a friend who is interested in one of the Instax cameras but wants something a bit more classic. I have traded these in the past as well and that sometimes allows me to get things like this. This is a button or the button for $10 from the same Goodwill on the same day so coming in strong with the Polaroids. I picked this one up just because it's cool and I'd like to add it to my collection. <clears throat> now, the final Goodwill find, and the best, is right over here in this Pentax case. They originally wanted $40 for it, but I only ended up paying $20. It is a Honeywell Pentax Spotmatic with the 50mm f1.8 Takuma. And that's the primary reason why I bought this, but it is the best condition Spotmatic that I have ever seen. And it works great. There's very minimal yellowing on the lens, and it is in fantastic shape. So I'm very glad I got this one because my Spotmatic that's over there is in much worse condition and did not come with that kit lens. Next, moving on, this was a yard sale find that I had just yesterday. They originally wanted 25 bucks, but I was able to talk them down to 10 on it. And I've been... I've been seeing these all over the place, but I never actually owned one until very recently, and I do appreciate that easy slip-off case, but it's a Nikon EM, very compact, 35mm SLR, mainly man uh, automatic in function, but it did come with the Series E 1.850mm kit lens, so overall 10 bucks for one of these is not a bad deal. A good starter camera, and it'll be great for testing out some of my other lenses on. Now that I've done just about everything else, I want to move over to this big 
column here, which is the meat of everything I found. We're going to start with this Canon TLB, and this one was broken when I got it. It had some issues with the shutter charging, which is why I paid $5 for it. Most of these came from that local camera store, but it's got a 50mm f1.8 FD lens on it. And it works really well now. It just had some issues with curtain travel, and I was able to get that fixed. Next is this Pentax MEF. There aren't any batteries in here right now, so you'll have to take my word for the fact that I got it into functioning condition, but it's working just fine now. It had the stuck mirror latch lever issue, and this one was free. Next up is this Nikon FE. This one had some battery compartment issues, mainly with corrosion and desoldering, but it now works just fine. Um, it's on the manual settings right now because again, this one doesn't have a battery, but uh, it does work just fine at any of the above speed settings when it's got batteries in it, which it doesn't right now. Oops, I forgot to uh, charge that. There we go. So yeah, this one was a fun repair project. This one cost me $5. And then I actually talked about this last time. I'm not sure why this is out here. Oh, well, I was reorganizing my shelf earlier, and this one is down here for that specific purpose. Give me one second. <clears throat> this is one of the best finds that I'd ever had at my local Salvation Army store. This is a Sears KSX, which is with a 50 millimeter F2 on it, I believe. This is a K-mount camera, working just fine for the low, low price of $3.99. So I was very happy to take this one home with me. Over here is a small accessory. This one is a Kodak self-timer unit. Very interesting thing. It came with a cable release on it. Essentially, you wind it up like this, and then you, you know, fire it like this. Snaps into the shutter housing of any camera, and that one cost me a whopping $1.50. Ignore the price tag on the side. This one here is a Nikormat EL, working just fine now. Uh, took me quite a bit of work to get functioning again. Came with this 35mm f2 on it. I got this one also for $5 because not only was the camera not working properly, uh, some issues with the shutter curtains, uh, one of the metal blades had buckled, which I was able to fix, and the lens had some pretty severe denting in the filter ring. So I was able to get this whole package for $5. It now works great and is ready to take some more pictures. Next, over here, we have a Kodak Retinet 1A in great condition. This one only cost me $10. It's a bit of a beater, but it works just fine, and I'm actually really excited to shoot some photos with this. Uh, some of the lower speeds aren't working as well, but I rarely, if ever, use those, so really not a big deal. Over here is this beast. It's a Konica FT-1 motor and this one was free i'm still working on repairing this one it's got some issues with the shutter release button other than that a uh, really neat camera and because it was free it came with this tamron sp it's an adapt all lens 35 to 210 zoom and obviously it has the konica adapt all unit on the back so very cool very glad to own it uh, i will get it working as soon as i can diagnose exactly what the issue is with the shutter button on to some of the best and most recent finds I'm going to make sure that I've talked about everything over there beforehand. I don't want to forget anything. All right, so this is some of the most recent stuff that I found. This stuff was, or this doesn't really count. This was from quite a while ago. I don't know if I talked about this or not in one of my previous camera hauls, but this is a Retina 2A. I got both this and this in a trade for some stylus epics. This one is working great. It's in beautiful condition, both cosmetically and functionally. But that one overall, I don't consider as spectacular. Rangefinder works okay, but not a big deal. But this one right here was one of my grail cameras for many years. This is a Kodak Retina 1 Type 118. This one's in fantastic shape. I 
just got done shooting a roll with it for the first time ever. And obviously its functional condition is just as good as its cosmetic condition because this camera is working great. Now, this one was given to me by a neighbor. It's an SX-70 Model 3. Leatherette's in not very good shape, but it does work. I don't have a battery in there right now because I was using it to test those two. But a very cool camera. Uh, never Can never have too many SX-70s, really. <clears throat> now, this one I found a while ago as well. Yashica 16EE. Oh, I forgot to close that. Let me make sure that that closes nicely. But it is a 16 millimeter camera. Works just fine. Even the meter cell is actually live on this one. But a very cool camera. It was $5. So yeah, these were both in a trade, in case you didn't catch that. I traded uh, a stylus zoom for this one and a stylus epic for this one. And then down here, this one I found yesterday. This is a Franca Salida 3. This one was $20, so a bit pricier than my usual. But it's in really good condition. And it functions beautifully. This thing originally had some issues with the shutter that I was able to fix very, very quickly. And now... If I can, oops, I forgot to move it past the interlock. As you can see, it's working great. Now this one I'm going to have to shoot stopped down quite a bit because it is a three element lens, although it is a Schneider, so I'm very excited to see how this one performs. Uncoupled rangefinder on the top, just needed some adjustment, and now it is working great. And my two most recent finds, I found both of these today. This one here in the case, if I can get it open is a Voiklander Vito C. I'm just gonna pop it out quick. A viewfinder camera, but this one is in really phenomenal shape. The dealer that was selling this had a 50% off sale and they originally wanted $25 for it. So I ended up getting this thing for just under $15 after tax. In really great shape too. Let's see if I can get some of those slow speeds on there for you. So awesome little camera. I'm very glad I finally have a great example of a Voigtlander viewfinder camera. And last, but certainly not least, my most recent find. This one came from today. This is a Petri 7S Circle Eye camera. As you can see, the blades are stuck open. There's an issue with the self-timer. So it's a rather interesting one. I'm going to get on repairing this, and it will be operational within the next couple of days. It's my first ever Petri camera, so I'm very excited to get this working. They originally wanted, if I can get the tag here, they originally wanted 25 bucks for it, but as I explained the issues, they sold it to me for $12.50. So as you can see, I got an absolute slew of stuff as of recently. Um, that's going to be it for this video. I understand it ran a little bit long, but I did have a lot to cover in fairness. Uh, I might do some videos on this stuff depending because school is starting soon. And uh, yeah, so I know it's been a long hiatus, but uh, just wanted to show you guys all this stuff quick. Thank you guys for watching. Please rate, comment, and subscribe, and I will see you guys next time.